I'm always ain't nobody gonna ever replace my Stacy. Oh yeah, I, oh, I, I've, seen, I've seen people do that too. Mm-hmm. I've seen people do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, we got two more. I only got two more questions for us, y'all. We're gonna wrap this thing up. I know y'all might be a little tired. So this right here is more of a personal question. There's no right or wrong here. I just want to know, man, personally, man, like, tell me, what are some things that can make you fall out of love? Just personally. <laughs> yeah. How can one fall out of love? Person, This is personal. I ain't, you know, just, just you. So like I said, ain't no, nothing. Because if we do general, we'll be all over the place. So just personally, you know what I'm saying? Matt, talk to me. What are some things that'll make you fall out of love, brother? Cheating. Um, being, being negligent towards the kids. And um, gaining a lot of weight. <laughs> and those are three things I would say. Yeah, I can fall out with you. Weight gain? Gain a lot of weight. Man, I say, yo, you get of, fat, he out. <laughs> this is a, cause, like I mean, you talk about KJ, it's not just about the image. This is a health thing. You know what I'm saying? I look at this, I love life. This is a, a, a healthy thing. This is a family genes. This is a lot tied into this. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a mentality thing too a lot of people not everybody I agree. not everybody so I, I don't want people to get triggered because this might trigger a few people oh you already a lot, triggered. Of people, a lot of people that grow a lot of times when people grow like gain a lot of weight later in life because some people gain it early when they're a kid they couldn't help that but a lot of times people gain a lot of weight later in life it comes from them not being happy with themselves a lot of times like they went through a depression mm. a breakup or something or some traumatic stuff happened a lot of times it comes from not being happy with yourself when you gain it later on in life. So I feel you. Yeah. Rissa, what you think about that? What do you think about that? Uh, <laughs> now, well, just you personally. What are some things that can make you fall out of love? Um, <clears throat> not being consistent. <laughs> um, uh, just not playing not just being like not playing your your role like for example if we're in a relationship and you know you come in saying that you are this person but then you turn around to not be that person eventually i don't know what like if if you can't handle nothing that that'll make me most definitely like fall out of love the kids depending on what you do to the kids that are that that affects me most definitely. Um, okay, okay. It's it's a lot, but it's mainly for me. It would be the respect thing. It has to be a respect thing. Um, communication too. That a that a turn me away. If okay. if we talking about communication. Let's say you you come in, but you don't know how to communicate properly, and we have this conversation on like what it takes, but you still continue to like not be that person. Then then it's an issue. I'm I'm always open before I hit that place, but it's just the inconsistency for me across the board that'll make me fall out of love for sure. Okay, okay, Izzy, what you think, man? What what are some of the things that make you fall out of love? What you talk to us? Uh, there's a couple of things, honestly, but one of the, some of the main ones is like, um, low confidence and insecurity and, you know, we all have insecurities, right? Mm -hmm. But like, you know, if a man, I guess is more insecure, um, then it's just like, it's kind of like, cause they kind of like build like the framework of the relationship. So it's like, you know, an insecure man is just going to make for an insecure relationship and an unstable relationship. And everything you do is going to be, you know, him kind of like holding you back from your full potential and kind of like leveling you out. So you don't, I mean, you might not be insecure, but now you're like, you know, to make him like feel better, you know, you're holding yourself back from your full potential. And from that, you might be a little bit resentful for that. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I guess like, you know, again, like, you know, consistency, you know, if you're not like, 
consistently doing the things like you know we did when like we met up it doesn't have to be the exact same things but like you know on this on kind of like the same frequency if you kind of like slow down after you like you know you've like gotten me it's like at that point you know it's like a ticking time bomb you know it's like there's no growth and just like settling and this relaxing like you always have to like I, I don't know there always has to be like a hunger for like growth a hunger for success, a hunger for something new, you know? So I feel like a consistent pattern of like, you know, excitement, you know, fun, adventure, growth is important. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got, folks. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So yeah. I definitely think, and I and really, I think Rissa hit, hit, I think all of them on the head. Be honest with you. So I think, it, I think it comes in three parts with me. I think communication is first. I think that we have to be. Able, I think communication works with just everything in life. I think we have to be able to communicate, man. I think one of the worst things, like one of the things that took me through my divorce, was this whole concept of not being able to communicate. You know what I'm saying? Like being able to communicate with people is is critical. Like we have to be able to talk to each other. Like if we can't talk to each other, we might as well walk the hell away right now. Yeah, like there's no point. There's no point if we cannot even communicate with each other. Like they, they, it's already a dead end street. So mm -hmm. I think communication is number one, and I think consistency comes right behind that. I think keep being able to keep up because a lot of times people go into situations where they start things or begin things and then they change. I think that anytime people make shifts or changes into the way that they operate, it becomes very I think that's what triggers insecurity because if you came in being what we'll say, what super affectionate, always communicating, and then all of a sudden now you no longer touch mm -hmm. them, now you no longer communicate. I think mm -hmm. that will build insecurity that sometimes they might think either insecurely more about themselves or they will think even more insecurely mm -hmm. upon your end. But I do think mm -hmm. consistency shows a lot within relationships mm -hmm. that when you change that trajectory or that or these ways mm -hmm. of operation. I think that's yes. very critical. Yes. And I think these are the signs people need to be looking the fuck out for. Like when you see people change that day, you got you better realize because one thing we understand is that people change as well. There are people who could awake who could wake up and be like, yo, I want something totally different. So you gotta look for them changes because sometimes the values that people might have went into this marriage with, their values have changed within a year or two years later. And it's not a it's not a it's not one of them things that it is that a person is wrong. We just got to understand that it's a part of evolution. People grow. They might not be in the same mentality that they was when you initially talked to them or y'all got married. Now their views, their purpose and everything else, where they want to go in life is totally different. And that's, hey, it might be heartbreaking, but guess what? That person could tell you it's not you, it's me. <laughs> um, the third one, I think the willing to be able to succeed. I think that after communication, we have to have the will to want to see certain things through. Like, I think like when people talk trials and tribulations, we have to be willing to build with people. We have to be willing to go through it. And I'm gonna be and I'm gonna be honest, man. I think it's weird. Like people who haven't gone through nothing, personally, I really don't care to hear the story because just like with friendships, you don't know what the fuck a person really willing to hold down or they willing to go do for you if you ain't been through nothing. Anybody could sit here and tell you, I'm going to be with you forever. I'm going to have this unconditional love until you fuck up, until you cheat, yep. until your ass lose your job, until something man, fucking occur. Anybody could say this, but then when it comes up, you really see the test of how unconditional that goddamn love is. So I think that willingness to really see. So I think that when people dive into that, you don't really know if a person with you until you've been through something. I think that's the real test of if a person really fucking loves you or not. I don't think you ain't be, your love ain't even, your love has not been tested if you ain't seen nothing. It only until the test comes that you know if you are actually in the position you are, you are acquitted for this situation. Everybody can say, oh, I love you, man. You know, I'm going to hold you down forever. And then, but you've never been through nothing. So, personally, if, if I went through a, to a relationship, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm skeptical. 
I don't know, cause cause I don't walk with that mentality of like I'm the shit or anybody will fuck with me. A big question to me is why do you fuck with me? And are you even willing to understand and help me work through my flaws? I don't want you to accept my flaws, cause I want you to want me to do better. So now I don't want you to unconditionally love me. Nah, don't accept the flaws, but understand that yeah, I am flawed, but I'm willing to work on my flaws to become better. Because that's all we can do as people. We hear people say it all the time. We're not perfect. So we got to stop acting like we perfect. And a lot of times we get jaded upon relationships that we've been through. That we look at it like, oh, because you might view something a certain way. We got to realize everybody hasn't been raised the same way you've been raised. So your ways of showing your love, they might not understand this because they might not have seen the things you've seen. You might have came from a nuclear family. They come from a single mother household. They don't know what the fuck it looked like to be a husband. How would he know what it looked like to be a husband when his daddy wasn't even there? How would he know? So sometimes you got to give people grace. you got to allow people and have that willingness to work through these situations. But it starts with communication. We got to That's talk. also... So if you, also, I'm not going to But you have to be able to communicate first. And then when y'all come to these railroads and somebody's saying, yo, I see this right here and I don't think this right here is, you know, this is where it's at. Then you got to be able to talk to it, but you also got to be willing to work. It. When people talk about being submissive, we love to throw this line on the side of women. Men need to be fucking submissive too. Marriage is a partnership. It's a fucking partnership. If you want to be independent, you stay by your goddamn self. Coming together with somebody means there's a reliance and there's a dependency upon each other. We exchange our strengths and our weaknesses. We build with each other. If you're walking into it thinking you're going to move alone, then nigga, you need to be by your motherfucking self. And that's fine. Because some people aren't built for relationships anyway. They might not know it. And they might get into a lot of them. But they might not know that you ain't built for this. Some people are meant to be single. And it's okay to right. be single. Right. But we have to understand if you choose to embark upon this journey, especially when we talk about marriage, I think marriage is a very, very sacred covenant. So when you embark upon this, either you're going to be in it or you're going to be out. But if you know you're willing to be out, exit. Don't let that tie you down and you sit there and suffer. I think the idea of somebody telling you to suffer, that's a fucking fool. Why don't you tell somebody they got to suffer? Like you can't make a choice to exit. I think that's crazy to me. I think if it's really not working, then you move on. Because I believe that you only got to get it right once. I don't care if I see a person get married 10 goddamn times. I don't think nothing of it. I'm like, hey, brother, keep on. you. Whatever. It might be you, though, because if you get married 10 times, you, you probably the problem. But I would simply tell them, yo, keep working that. You just got to get it right once. Right. I, know I, I know I get a little lippy, but I felt a little passionate about that thing. And anybody know me when I get passionate, right. I'm going to do it. I feel Matt, we going to chime in. I hope you ain't lost your thought. Uh, kind of, but I think I, I think I can get it back real quick. I, I, 